Joining us now on the Harbor One Hotline, the newly introduced former Red Sox pitcher. Now he is the chief baseball officer. Craig Breslow is with Gresh and Fourier here on Red Sox flagship WEEI. Craig, good afternoon. Congratulations. How are you? I am I am good. Spinning a little bit, but but doing well. Thank you so much, and good afternoon to you guys. Well, well, well get ready, friend, because... Welcome you, back. Yeah, welcome back. You know what it's like. Here we go. <laughs> you were, uh, in the press conference, you did kind of lean into, hey, I'm an Ivy League baseball nerd, guilty as charged. But for you, Craig, in your baseball life, where has being a nerd, but being a big league player intersected in making you the executive that you are today? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. It's like I spent, you know, half of my professional career uh, convincing people I was a baseball player and then the other half convincing them that I was a nerd. Uh, but no, I think, uh, you know, what multiple perspectives and having worn multiple hats allows me to do is uh, approach this job with with empathy. I think I can understand as, as well as anyone, uh, you know, the, the challenges that, people take you know that people face in the office trying to deliver information into a clubhouse and the challenges that people in the clubhouse face uh you know kind of living through the grind that can be a 162 game major league schedule does and with that does that change how you will view the trade deadline as a former player and an executive that is picking players and you know and especially how how important it is for manage, management to add to a team and to show that they believe in them you know, there, there's so much uh, nuance to, to, to acquisitions into the acquisition process. And, uh, you know, the, the, the trade deadline exists kind of under a microscope. But, uh, you know, one thing that uh, I can point to over the last few years is being a part of arguably the most active trade deadlines in, in baseball with, uh, you know, with my, my former team, the Chicago Cubs, and, uh, you know, the, the very many difficult decisions that we, we had to make. Um, but, you know, to answer your question, I, I do think that, uh, you know, transactions around the deadline can kind of have outsized impact because of the focus on what they might mean or what, you know, you might be implicitly saying about, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the front office's belief in a team or lack of belief in a team. So that's absolutely something to be mindful of as you approach the deadline. So also, okay, so uh, you've only been on the job a couple weeks now. I don't even know if it's been a couple weeks, so we're fast tracking this. So uh, based on like your, you know, your quick little eye test, what do you think the biggest flaws are with this team and what do you plan to do to fix them? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, any any kind of quick diagnostic reveals that starting pitching was, uh, you know, was was an area uh, that, that represents huge opportunity to take a meaningful step forward. And I think there are multiple paths to doing that. I think there's the emergence of, you know, kind of young players. I think there's solidifying and stabilizing the roles of some of the guys that, you know, were forced to bounce back and forth between the rotation and the bullpen. And then I think there's, you know, exploring uh, kind of the, the free agent and trade markets, uh, you know, in, in a way that uh, bears meaningful fruit. Um, but, you know, that's likely where most of our attention will will be is kind of on, on the pitching front. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing that stands out is shoring up in field defense. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, as, as Story returned late in the season and, and, and stabilized the shortstop position, um, you know, that will – that will continue to, to be really important heading into 2024. Um, you know, there are some guys internally that, that we're excited about if they can take a step forward, but we should, we should also be opportunistic and looking at meaningful upgrades in second base. Craig Breslow with Gresh and Fourier. He is the new chief baseball officer over at uh, Fenway Park. And uh, financial limitation isn't a concern. I know that was said during the press conference. Uh, Craig, can you sort of add some context to that? Because... As you know, that is one thing the Red Sox fans have always had their eye on is the spending or lack thereof. Is that financial limitation isn't a concern as open-ended as it seems? Uh, you know, what, what I can say is, is, you know, I spent a lot of time with John and Tom and Mike and Sam through this process, uh, you know, and at no point did I get the feeling that their minds were set on anything other than building a sustainable winner. Uh, you know, it's, it's up to us to kind of collectively uh, execute the vision um, that, you know, building a sustainable winner entails and, you know, 
kind of for me at this point, it's building around that young, exciting core, some of whom are in the big leagues right now, some of whom are coming, uh, and, and some of whom are not in the organization just yet. So, you know, because you, you had mentioned, like, I guess Sam had mentioned how you, uh, like you presented them with this plan, right? Plan for the future. I have no idea what it entitled. Uh, but, I mean, they're interviewing you. Did you ask them any questions specifically? Because, you know, who knows if you even wanted this job based on what they were trying to, you know, sell you. What question did you ask them? Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there was a, a host of dialogue uh, through this process and, you know, the, I, the, the thing that emerged was that there really was, uh, you know, kind of alignment in terms of the vision, in terms of, you know, what uh, the, the ultimate outcome that we're looking to achieve is and, you know, that we would have the, the resources to execute this plan. Um, but, you know, what, what every organization strives for is building that sustainable winner, and it takes, uh, you know, kind of consistency of decision making. It takes discipline. It takes a willingness to make bold, difficult decisions around, uh, you know, trading prospects for for major league value. Um, you know, and I'm I'm willing to do all of those things. I've I've seen all of those things executed. Um, but certainly, you know, I, I had questions for ownership in the same way that they had questions for me. Because at the end of the day, what this needs to be is is a partnership in order for it to be successful. So you know, Craig, we've we've heard the whole sustainability thing before i'm just trying to you know and just with all due respect like what would make you different than what high and bloom kind of preached before he left yeah i mean i i obviously am, am not completely familiar with you know with with the specifics of of, of you know Haim's vision uh what i am comfortable speaking about is this idea of, of you know kind of leveraging the acquisition development and optimization space uh as as best we can and creating competitive advantages in that regard. Um, I've had some success doing that on the development side, uh, on the optimization side, interacting with a, a, you know, a coaching staff and ensuring that we've got the right people in the right places at the right times to, to optimize for, for positive outcomes. Um, you know, and I think those are the things that, that I can really drill down on. Uh, and, and, and I would even expand that sentiment beyond just uh, kind of the, the, the clubhouse and into the front office and making sure that we're organized in a way that is both effective and efficient. Um, you know, and, 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 and that means that we are delivering the right information to key decision makers, whether those are in the office or, or in the clubhouse. Craig Breslow's with Gresh and Fourier here on WEI. And Craig, there's been a lot of talk about you put the pitching plan in place in terms of the Cubs and the development and is there a player within that development scheme that you're the most proud of that might be a representation of what you would like to build within the pitching staff not only at the big league level but even at the at the high minor league level here in Boston yeah so you know difficult for me to speak specifically about players in, in another organization. Uh, what I can say is, you know, kind of the current pitching infrastructure adopted uh, a, a pitching population that was, you know, kind of near the bottom of, of industry rankings in terms of velocity, in terms of stuff, in terms of swing and miss and strikeout rates. And, uh, you know, kind of at the, the time that I left um, and, and a credit to, a host of, of people and, and processes. Uh, you know, the organization that the Cubs ranked first across the minor leagues in fastball velocity, second in stuff grades, and, and, and third in, in strikeout rates. So was that because of, like, a pitching program or just different draft picks? Uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to uh, decouple acquisition from development, but – uh, we had players who were already in the organization take a meaningful step forward with respect to to those kind of three metrics. So I do think that training to that changing the training environment, that aligning behind an overarching pitching philosophy, and then organizationally committing to executing it uh, can bear real fruit. Uh, Craig, I know that at one point in time, the legendary manager Earl Weaver narrowed it down as give me a bunch of big bleepers to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Do you look at pitchers in a certain way? Do you have a style? Do you have a type? I know you were a left-handed bullpen guy, so it's not like it's lost on you the kinds of pitchers that you need, but do you have a type or a style of pitcher that you really like to lean into? Uh, 
you know, kind of the, if, if you think uh, about the mental model of, of pitching, right, successful pitchers uh, can, can miss bats, can manage hard contact, and can minimize walks. Uh, you know, the ability to generate swings and misses in the strike zone is kind of the time-tested, foolproof recipe for success because uh, you're not influenced to a great extent uh, by balls in play. Uh, you know, so kind of in a in a perfect world, we've got a host of pitchers who can generate swings and misses in the strike zone. Um, okay, so the most important question, you're going to get this a lot, so I'm just going to get it out of the way now, okay, Craig, is – uh, will you guys be signing Shohei Otani? And if you get the opportunity, do you have the green light to do it? <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm reluctant to speak about any kind of specific player or or strategy, especially as we kind of just enter free agency. I'm trying to get up to speed on as much as possible, but you know, like I said, the, the resources have not been a question here. What we have to determine is you know how to best allocate those resources toward that vision of building a, uh, a sustainable winner. Okay, so let's say his name is Hohe Shotani. Yes, let's it's talk about hitter. him. Okay, <laughs> but it's a guy who is a hitter and a pitcher. How does talent evaluator Craig Breslow approach a unique player like that, especially given that at least for one year, Hohe Shotani might not pitch in 2024? <laughs> you know, there's there's obviously tremendous value in consolidating talent, uh, but again, you know, until I'm kind of more up to speed on the current roster construction and and can dive deeper and get a better sense, uh, you know, it would just be premature to uh, to speak to that to any greater degree. Do you think this team is lacking a superstar? Uh, you know, there there was a question that I was asked about that earlier, and you know, it's. It's in, in my mind, it's a bit of kind of circular logic because when teams are really good, you point at their best player and you kind of uh, anoint them a superstar, um, you know, and then it's it's a little bit more difficult to uh, kind of reach superstardom on, uh, you know, on a team that maybe isn't quite as, as successful. Um, you know, to, to me, we have to operate within the, the constraints of, uh, you know, kind of roster construction and roster limits. And, you know, if we're able to consolidate talent and, and, you know, by that, I mean, kind of consolidate wins across the players that we can put on the field, we've got a much better chance of raising our ceiling. Um, so, you know, it kind of depends on how you define stardom, but would we like to put the most talented players on the field? Absolutely. Uh, Craig, where do you stand on Alex Cora? I know you have a pre-existing relationship. He's on with us all the time. Uh, Boston fans are kind of up and down on him as the uh, manager. Was that ever an issue for you going through this process, who your manager was going to be? You know, uh, you know, it, it was clear that I kind of had agency uh, over all baseball operations decisions. Uh, that being said, I've got a longstanding relationship with Alex. We were teammates. You know, we've spent time in in the same clubhouses on on the same teams. And when you think about the profile of a successful manager, it's you know one who can bring people together, who can connect those from different backgrounds. Uh, it's one who can synthesize information and and slow the game down in a way that they're optimizing their decision making. Um, you know, it's, it's someone who's proven they can win in a market like Boston. And that, that kind of profile speaks to exactly the attributes that Alex has. So, you know, I'm excited for him to, to manage the team in 2024. And, you know, we'll, beyond that, we'll kind of have the conversations as appropriate. Uh, what does a brainy smarty like Craig Breslow do for fun? You can't say crossword puzzle. <laughs> No books, no crosswords, no, no crossword puzzles. I, I, so I've got uh, three, three kids at home. I've got twin eight-year-old boys and and a daughter who will be five at the, at the end of the month. Uh, and when you combine that with the demands of this job, uh, I'm not sure that free time is a luxury that I'm going to have. Yeah, the last one for me, though, because like obviously your reputation is being the smartest guy in the building. And by talking to you for the last 12, 14 minutes, oh, yeah. I can easily say I need to optimize, uh, you know, synthesize, consolidate. Man, my head yeah. is spinning. Our audience will the, need help. Yes. Uh, next time you're on with us, uh, just this is a request. Dumb it down for us, meathead ex football players. Please, please. I'm going to go so back I and look at my notes. Say is after, 
I thought you were going to say after 14 minutes, it's clear that that is absolutely not true. Oh, no, oh, no. no. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I would, know. Would have, I would have no clue. You. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, quite the, it's quite the other way. We're used to dealing with Merloni. Yeah. <laughs> and the way Lou puts things. Hey, uh, Craig, good luck with uh, everything, and hopefully this is uh, the first of many conversations. Uh, thank you for the time and the clarity on certain things. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys. All right. There we go. There goes uh, Craig Breslow. Jeez. It might take us uh, way. He needs to. I'm not kidding. He uses Synth- a- synthesize, optimize, consolidate, max. I mean, there's a lot of mumbo jumbo. Listen, we got Lonnie coming up. We're going to have to repack some of this, unpack some.